I dreamed. I daydreamed. I drew pictures. Oh, Dad, you're the greatest. I promise to get straight A's for the rest of my life. Oh, no. Oh. no. Wow, I never expected to get my own car. Uh, oh, uh, well, gee, sweetheart, I, uh, I, I never expected you to expect that either. <laughs> um, that's why I expect I got you your own keys to the van. Well, this is good, too. This is good, too. I mean, really, how lucky could I get? Got my license, my own set of keys to the van, and now we could forget about the straight A's. <laughs> <laughs> Life just keeps getting better and better, huh? All right, sweet. <laughs> oh. So does this mean I could use the van sometimes? Anytime you like. Oh, just think of all the fun you could have. You could pick up all the girls, cruise around looking for other girls who are on their way to the library, too. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome back to... Ayo. Hey, Oh, hey. This is the Boss Podcast. I'm Tori. And I'm Kevin. And we are here to rewatch and discuss every single episode of Who's the Boss. We're starting season five today. Very wow. exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. Yes. <laughs> no, I mean, it's crazy. It, I know. I can't believe we're here already. I was just going over the list of episodes for this season, and there are so many of them that I'm like, wow, I can't believe we're already here. Like... A Jack story, mm-hmm. uh, Cardinal Sin. I know none of these titles mean anything to you, but no, they you'll don't. know when we get there. Heather can wait. Like I, some of these, I just boozing buddies. I can't believe we're this far. Okay, already. Okay, so the name of this episode is Sam's Car. It first aired on Tuesday, October eighteenth, nineteen eighty-eight. Wow, wow, that was late. A late start to the season, yeah. wasn't it? Don't they normally start in like September? Yeah, I think so. I think so. October, yeah. Oh, yeah. that is interesting. I wonder if something was going on or... That also may explain why Danny Pintaro looks so much older. Yeah, he does. <laughs> I wonder if they actually started shooting like in September or... Yeah, um, maybe they started shooting really. He does look a lot older. He does. You can he see really had a growth spurt. Yeah, he did. And the hair's all like different. Yes, everything. like anyway. he no longer has Jonathan kind of bowl cut. Right. It's like trying to do some style. (laughs) The uh, TV Guide summary for this episode is Samantha is anxious to take to the streets with her new license until Tony gives her a yellow tank. Hmm, Yellow (laughs) tank. This Um, episode. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I got one. Uh, Tony, Tony finally saved up for a solid car for Sam and lovingly equips it with more than ample safety features. She dares not to tell him that the ancient tank is more of an embarrassment than a dream come true. When it gets stolen, she's secretly delighted, but pretends to miss it. When it's returned, Tony finds out the truth as it was parked out of campus sight. Yet he draws more pragmatic conclusion, the girls expected. Uh, What? I don't know. That's what it says. (laughs) Very thorough. I like it. Um, he uses some large words like yeah. Tony does now. Yes, okay. he does. Pragmatic. He's in college. Yeah. All right. So when this episode, oh no, I'm sorry. This episode was written by Bob Perlow and Gene Bronstein or Bronstein, not positive. Now these are the same two writers who wrote the season closer, which I had words about. Yeah, we all remember <laughs> that one. But I really like for these two episodes to be written by the same team. I really like this one. Mm-hmm compared to that to the last one so when this episode opens angela is frosting a cake oh boy <laughs> and mona come, mona's so mean i know immediately she comes in and then she makes a motion of the cake and she starts making a gagging mo- yeah, like she's she puts like, her finger cooking. in her mouth yeah you're cooking and then starts gagging so angela says well no angel food cake for you yep and she's making this cake because Samantha is taking her driver's uh, license test right now. And hopefully she's going to yeah. come home with it. Like if she hadn't come home with a driver's license. We'd just have an angel cake. Angel food <laughs> cake. A sad cake. But Mona tells her that it looks like an albino meatloaf. <laughs> I mean, what is that? I don't know. It's, it's probably a horribly insensitive thing to say in the first place. Right. But it's kind of funny <laughs> um, <laughs> because it does look like a little white meatloaf. And, and maybe she really followed the directions and studied up on how to make this cake. Yeah, I maybe mean, I it's think good. She's now lived with Tony for almost five years. I, I think that she should be able to make a simple 
white cake at this point. I don't know. But who knows? And we really don't get any resolution. The cake no, is the never cake brought is up never, again. Yeah, <laughs> no. you never see it again. We don't even get a like, hmm, not bad, mom or Angela. No. Okay, so now Jonathan comes in to the kitchen. And here's where you can tell that Danny Pintaro's grown up quite a bit. His hair is now kind of like quaffed to the side. Yeah. He's got little bangs, but like not a bowl cut anymore. And he just looks a little more mature all around. Yeah. Very, it's very 80s look though. Late 80s. Oh yes, totally. Like this was the, if, if there was a boy at school with this little haircut, I would have had dreamy eyes for mm. sure. Jonathan says they're back. And Sam's driving. This is going to be great. So Angela's like, you know, honey, I'm so glad to see you so excited for Sam. Jonathan says, are you kidding me? She's my ticket out of this burg. Burg. Yes, I had to look that up. Because at first I thought, well, wouldn't you say burb? Like suburb? Yeah, like I didn't know what he said either. And then my closed captioning said bird. And I knew that couldn't be right. Bird. (laughs) So... It is an ancient or medieval fortress or walled town. Mm. So a burg is the right word there. Wow, he's using big words. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a little word, but... <laughs> well, I mean, big, big <laughs> right. definition word, I should say. So they go running out into the living room, and Tony comes in the front door, and he says, Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce you to Samantha, baby, you can drive my car. Miss Ellie. Mm. And she comes in with her first driver's license. So Tony with the big introduction. I know. And it looks like the old driver's license that we had that was like laminated that people could easily forge for saying that they were 21. Yes. Now I realize that somebody I know got a driver's license. Yeah. And it's portrait, like not landscape. And so, oh, okay, yeah, some of them are like that. Yeah, and I somebody think. told me that it's like that until you're 21 now. Oh. And so then it's easier to be able to easily differentiate between somebody who's over 21 and under 21. Oh, I, I don't know, know if that's that. only California. Huh. I honestly don't even know if I saw a California one. Where was I? I have a very bad memory. <laughs> but I do remember that. They give her a big hug, and Jonathan's like, oh, hey, Sam, can you bring me to? And she says, forget it, twerp. And he's like, well, you got your license, but it didn't make you a better person. I know. Not nice. <laughs> no. And then Tony says, get out of here. And Sam's going like, nah, 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 after right, him as right. he is leaving. <laughs> Poor Jonathan. He gets no respect. And uh, so then Sam's, uh, Tony's going to Mona. Like, oh, you should have seen her. You should have seen her. And he keeps saying the word Sam know, over and says, over again. The closed captioning says, all right, come on, Sam. Sam, you should have Sam. <laughs> What does that mean? I don't know. Like, I think he was supposed to say, Mona, you should have seen Sam. Right. But they just left. You know how yeah. they, were, you know. How yeah, they unless somebody fell down and broke show. something, they were just going to keep going. Yeah, they just ripped through takes. So they just probably accepted the fact that he's just called Mona Sam yeah. and no one cares. But it's fine because that would happen in a real life family situation, right? Right, he, yeah, I say exactly. the wrong name all the time. Right. Call A.V. Isla and Isla A.V. Call the dog. All sorts of names. Uh, so he says she had the big, you should have seen her. She had the biggest smile I've ever seen at the DMV. In fact, she had the only smile I've ever seen at the yeah, DMV. Yeah, it's funny. Good yes. reference to how miserable it is at the it, DMV. It really is. <laughs> but then uh, Mona says, I don't know. The guy that gave me my test left with a smile. Nobody wants to hear about grandma having sex all the time. <laughs> so, Can we just leave it alone? For, I have questions. So first of all, how <laughs> old was Mona when this happened? Two, did oh, Mona give the too. guy who was giving her her driving test a hand job? Maybe. And three, I'm going to stop saying. thinking about all of yeah. this right now. Yeah. So Maybe that's how she passed. Yeah, probably. I don't know. I, I don't think Mona's a very good driver because she's messed up Angela's car when she's taken it out before. That's true. <laughs> and she's been, ri- been riding a bike forever. <laughs> yes, that's a good point, too. So Tony just completely ignores her and is like, come on, Sa- come on, Sam, come over here right. and tell them how it went. Everybody should ignore her <laughs> at that point. <laughs> Every time Sam goes to tell her story, he's cutting in. So she's like, tell, her, tell them what you got on your score. She's like, I got, she got a hundred. Mm-hmm. She got a 100, not one answer wrong. So then he says, okay, tell them what your driving examiner said. And again, she's going to say what he said, and Tony cuts in. She says he's the best new driver she's seen. (laughs) He wished she she could give his wife driving lessons, and she's been driving for 30 years. Then 
he's like, okay, all right, then sit, tell him what he said. I, I messed that up. That's what this part is here. And she's waiting for him to say it, but he doesn't. So she says, he said I'm the best new driver he's seen all year. Wow. Yes, that's pretty good. Yeah, it is. So she really took this test seriously. She when got did all she the practice. Well, we didn't. Well, somewhere between May and October. It's been right. a very long time. <laughs> Angela and Tony could be married now. We don't know. It's that's been a true. very long time. That's true. So he says, I, you know, it's. I guess it's like they say, like father, like Sam. Hmm. Such a cheese ball, Tony. I know. <laughs> Samantha looks older too here, but not, not as much of a growth spurt. Because girls, I feel like she's already had her like major growth spurt. Right. Here. She's probably the height she is now already here, but uh, Jonathan's still got a little ways to go. Oh so yeah, she, that's that's a good point because I guess she would have fully been, she would have fully grown. Yes, because she's what six. Oh, she's sixteen here, right, obviously. At least right. Samantha is. So she's pretty much through with puberty, and I've been reading a lot about puberty lately <laughs> <laughs> because of our kids. And girls usually stop growing like two years after they get their period. So she would pretty much be done growing here probably. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then boys go through puberty a bit later than girls do. And so Jonathan probably, they can, boys can grow up until they're like 18 years old. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. And he probably isn't going to have his, you know, bigger growth spurts until he's like 14. They're very excited. Everybody's looking at the driver's license. Angela says to Tony, don't you think it's time for the presentation? Oh boy. Yes. So he goes over to Sam and he reaches into his pocket and he says, put out your hand and close your eyes and you'll get a big surprise. And then Mona also puts her hand out. Of course. (laughs) What is, now just what is Mona expecting? (laughs) <laughs> I know, Ridiculous. and I almost feel like there should have been a call back to the driver's examiner thing here, and like that's what he said or something, but this wasn't a show at, at 8 p.m. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so he says, not you, Mona, and she puts, she's like, you gotta try. So she puts her hand away, and he places a key into Samantha's hand. So she gets very excited. She squeals. She's like, oh, I dreamed about this day. I drew pictures. You're the greatest dad. I promise I'm going to get straight A's for the rest of my life. Yeah. And then she's it's like, a lie. I, <laughs> yes, absolutely. She says, I never expected to get my own car. Like, where does she think he would have this car? I don't know. To begin with. And I so, don't know. Yeah, Tony's like, I, well, I, I actually never expected you to think that either. That's why this is actually a key to the van. So she's like, oh, okay, well, that's good, too. You know, that's very exciting. And she's like, this, how, how could things get any better? Like, I have my license, I have my own key to the van, and now we can forget that whole straight A's for the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> so she's like, There's yes. not worry about it now. No, not at all. So she's thinking this is a pretty good. She's like, this day just keeps getting better and better. So she gives him a big hug. She's very excited. Now she says, oh, so this means that I can use the van, right? And he's like, oh, yeah, absolutely. So Angela's like, oh, just think of all the fun you'll have driving with the other, driving other girls around. You can go looking for other girls who are on their way to the library, (laughs) which she was really going to say boys. So they're all kind of uh, hanging out and thinking about how great it's going to be when she's able to get out on the road. So she starts saying, you know, okay, well, great. After lunch today, I'm going to go do this. And Tony's like, uh, I actually have to go run some errands. Okay, well, yeah. then after that, like, I'll go do this. And he's like, uh, no, I got to go pick up Jonathan from... Oh, no, he says, I have to go pick up Philly Fingers because he got kicked out of his house again. Okay, what? All right. So, oh, you don't have any of this? No, I don't. Okay. Philly yes. Fingers. <laughs> this is the antenna TV the house again. version cuts this. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, then none of she's like, okay, here. well, then after that, I'll go do this. And he's like, ah, I got to take Jonathan to soccer practice. So she's See, like, okay, well, how about right now? Like, can I go get in the van right now? Because you're here and you're not doing anything. And he's like, oh, um, okay, well, let's go. So she's like, no, 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 I want to go by myself. By the way, where's Jesse? We haven't seen Jesse in a I while. don't know. Yeah, it's been gone a while. <laughs> and Because uh, I just remembered him because he was driving the van before. Car so, and driver. Yes. No. Oh, yeah, you're right. Was Car and driver. Mm-hmm. Okay. Absolutely. So, <laughs> so proud of myself. he's so proud of himself right now. Yeah. Uh, so she, he, she's like, no, no, I want to go by myself. And he's like, all right, well, if the state of Connecticut says you're ready, then I guess I have to say you're ready too. 
So he gives her a kiss goodbye. She goes running out the front door. She, oh, wait. And Angela says, wait, you didn't have a piece of my cake yet. Oh, uh, see. Okay. And then Mona says, run like the wind. <laughs> And tell Sam to get out of there. Mona, you're so mean. So, the, oh, I was wrong. So the cake did come up again a little bit. Uh, see, and that's interesting. That I mean, like, all that stuff was cut out. And it makes sense to some of the things that happen later in the episode that are a little, like... Yes. I mean, it didn't not make sense. But, like, later on when she says, I've told... I'm, I've told... I've, dri- driven, I've driven the total. van a total of, like, two minutes. Whatever. Right, yeah. And it's like, well, that makes you think that something happened that we didn't see. And that's right. just it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, there's, there just, I mean, I could see it's an easy scene to cut because it doesn't really take away. It gives added context, but it's not taking away like a major plot point. Yeah. But it's, I mean, it you helps know, it just, with the plot point, though, that he, yeah. she ends up getting her own car. But when they chop these episodes down so much, they just lose some of the I know. cuteness, you know, that they originally had. So then Tony watches her leave the front door and he's like, okay, just make sure like if you're parked at an incline, turn your wheels and make sure you put on the parking brake. And then he's like, oh, she's gone. (laughs) And he's so sad. Yeah, I have none of that. Right. So now we cut to the next day or someday or wait a minute. This is actually the same day. Never mind. She must have gone with him to run errands. And they're now putting cans of food into the cabinets. Where do these people put their dishes? I don't. All these cabinets have cans of food in them and tomatoes. Cans of food. And everything's in alphabetical order, which yes. makes no sense. So she, hand, he, he, she hands him asparagus, and he puts it up with the A's. Then she hands him Brussels sprouts, and he puts it up with the B's. Who eats Brussels sprouts out of a can? I, don't, I guess they See, do. See, this is why nobody liked Brussels sprouts before. Oh, because they came out of a can? I guess so. Or I think people used to like boil them and like not roast Ugh. them like we do now because they've always had a bad rap, but they are absolutely delicious. And zucchini. Who eats zucchini out of a can? I didn't even know they made that in a can. Neither did I. Then no, new. she hands him alphabet soup and he's like, oh, that's a tough one. This could go anywhere. <laughs> so silly. <laughs> now they hear a screech coming from the driveway and they run outside and they see that Bonnie... Bonnie's back, has pulled up in a brand new car. She brought something with her, too, when she pulled up. So Sam says, <laughs> this car is so cool. And then Tony says, my trash can. Because his trash can is completely smashed well, underneath the front of She completely leveled it <laughs> and doesn't even realize that she no. did that. She took it and then dragged it for a bit. Bonnie says, I'm really sorry, Mr. Maselli, but you know, they make rubber ones that pop right back out. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Bonnie. Yeah. And uh, he's like, okay, yeah, thanks. So they're walking around the car and looking at it. Tony's like, oh, no, looks like you got your first dent. Well, at least you got your first dent out of the way. Right. Oh, and your second one and your third one. Is that squirrel fur? Squirrel fur. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. I she know. Ran over a squirrel. This little car is cute. It's some kind of Volkswagen. Yeah, I think a Golf, like a old convertible Golf. It's so cute. Okay, and so uh, Sam's like, looking at the car and Bonnie's like, Oh, you do you like it? And Sam's like, this is really awesome. So Bonnie says, I woke up this morning and there it was in the driveway with a big red ribbon. And she says, is my dad the best or what? And Sam's like, yeah, but my dad's the best too, because he gave me my own set of keys to the van. And so now we both have wheels. So they're Mm. very excited. And Tony, you can tell feels a little bad. He's like, Oh, that's really nice of your dad to get you a brand new car, Bonnie. And she says, well, he was just so happy that I finally passed the test. (laughs) So (laughs) Sam's trying to get Bonnie to stop talking. Right. Because she doesn't want her dad to hear this. And But Bonnie lets it slip that she flunked the test five times and finally passed on the sixth one. Oh, boy. And, And Tony's like, five times? And Sam's like, you know, people get really scared taking that test. And he's like, yeah, but six times? Sam suggests to, suggests to Bonnie that they go for a drive. And Tony's like, no. No. And he's, she's like, why? And he's like, well, you got, you got stuff to do. What stuff? Well, you know, just stuff. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, Real okay, good well. Answer. Yeah. Bonnie's like, that's okay. I got to get home anyway. And Sam's like, okay, well, maybe later. And he's like, oh, no. 
So she's like, all right, well, I'll, I'll call you. So then Bonnie gets back in the car and leaves and <laughs> Tony picks up his trash can <laughs> and smashed. chucks it on the, the side of the house. So when they go back into the house, Sam's like, why won't you let me go with her? And he's like, there's no way I can let you ride with Bonnie. You're not getting behind the wheel with her because she's run over the trash can. She failed five times. Like, that does have to be scary for a parent when your kids start driving. Like, you don't know how they did on their tests or what kind of driver they are. But Sam's like, you're just, you're being really unfair. Now, Angela comes into the kitchen right then. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> says, I just saw Bonnie pulling out of our driveway in a brand new convertible. Why is she dragging our trash can down the street? So did she hit another trash can? Uh, maybe. <laughs> she had to Yeah, have. took out a second one. <laughs> oh, now they have no trash cans. We've cut to another day where Samantha comes into the kitchen. Mo- uh, Mona and Jonathan are sitting at the table. I don't know. Oh, they're playing checkers. Because, you know, people just do that. But I guess back then maybe you did. Yeah. And she says, I figured it out. I've had my license for three days now, and I've driven a total of two minutes. Wow. (laughs) At this rate, I will have driven 17 hours by the end of my life. Then Mona says, oh, don't worry about it. Just do what I do. And she puts up a thumb. Thumb it. Hmm. That's horrible advice for a child. Yeah, yeah. You hitchhike. (laughs) Yeah. No one should ever hitchhike. No. Not even in the 80s should anyone have ever hitchhiked. That's how, like, every scary movie starts. And that's Grandma's advice. Yes, thank you, Grandma. So Tony comes into the kitchen from the back door, and he says, I have a big surprise for you. Come outside. And Mona says, is it a monthly bus pass? And he's laughing. He's like, no, no, come on. You're going to love this. Okay. I remember this scene as a kid, and it was just as funny watching it with our kids and watching it recently when my mom was here last week and we watched it, and she enjoyed this scene. I don't know, it's funny. It's just kind of like a classic 80s sitcom scene. So they go out into the back, and there's a car, what appears to be a very large car, under some sort of car cover. Yeah. Tony rips it off. And we get a close-up of Samantha's face while the Space Odyssey theme starts playing. Yeah, this was well done. (laughs) So well done. Well done. (laughs) She kind of slowly approaches the car, and the camera is panning the car so that we really can see how enormous this thing is. Now, it's yellow. It has reflectors all the way down the side. It has little metal spikes that come out to, like, Touch the curb, I think, if you get too close to yeah, a Yeah, that's curb. what I think those are. That's what I, I think yeah, so, too. I was worrying about them, but I, that's what they are. Reflectors all the way down. Then in the back, there are three brake lights, and Tony will go through all this, too. But it's just kind of this first picture you get of this enormous car. And there is a tire on the rear of the car. So she looks stunned. I don't know what the tire is going to do. <laughs> he calls it the rear impact resistor or yeah, something sure. like that. <laughs> She's just stunned. I mean, she doesn't know what to say. She doesn't know what to do. Tony says, I was going to tie a ribbon on it, just like Bonnie's dad, but I didn't have enough time. And Mona says, or enough ribbon. (laughs) Or enough ribbon. (laughs) And Jonathan comes out and is like, this car is so cool. It's like the ones they had in Mad Max. (laughs) (laughs) That's not a compliment. No, not at all. But for a little kid, it probably does seem like a pretty cool car true and it's yellow did i mention it's yellow okay so yes pretty sam, sure you did. sam's like dad this is great but i don't get it and he's like well you know with my busy schedule you haven't really had a chance to drive the van so if you have to be 16 which i'm not crazy about and if you have to drive which i'm really not crazy about i would feel much better knowing that you are in this american classic and then he kind of punches the side of it and it sounds like a tank american classic <laughs> And Angela comes up behind him and says, Sam, when I was growing up, all the coolest guys had cars just like this. We should have asked my stepdad what this car is, or your dad, because I know I have no idea. But it just... It it looks like some kind of large, like, Buick or Plymouth or something. Yeah. I mean, it's... It's definitely probably a 70s or 60s car. Yeah, it looks like 70s, I would Mm -hmm. say. Um, she, so she says, all of the coolest guys had this car. And she says, I went to a drive-in in one just like this. And Mona's like, yeah. And you took six girls, with six girls. But Angela says, that's what you, what I told you. Mm. 
But Johnny Hampstead didn't stop smiling for two days. Whoa. <laughs> what do you think went down in that car? I'm thinking a handy. An a, yeah, or, H.J. Or even more. I don't know. He couldn't stop smiling for days. Right. <laughs> Whatever I mean, it was. definitely not sex. Not with Angela. But I'm thinking maybe a hand job, possibly a blow job. Angela. Uh, I don't know. But Mona is completely impressed. Yeah. Also, we shouldn't be having this conversation in front of the 16-year-old. No. <laughs> so Mona's like, Angela, I didn't know. Either that or Angela's lying just like prom night. And really, she did go with six girls. Right. Or maybe she thinks, you know... Laying a kiss on him made that, him smile for days. That is a good point, too. Yes, I maybe I went... Down. Like, we went right into I the gutter I went down the gutter one. too quickly. You're right. Yeah. With Angela, with you Angela, can't you tell. Know. Okay, so he Tony goes up to them, and he's like, Ladies, do you mind? This is not your moment. So he goes up to Sam, and he's like, Listen, I know it's not small and sporty, but it's perfect for you for two reasons. Safe and... And tea. It's so Tony. <laughs> he holds up his thumbs and then he puts his thumbs together. And he says, get a load of these special features. So he's showing her what he's had done to the car. He said, this is two tons of the finest steel ever out of Detroit. And then he says, and it's been complemented by heavy duty, functional, yet decorative rear impact resistor, which is the tire. <laughs> the tire. <laughs> yes. Then he says, I added... Not one, but two, not or two, but three additional brake lights. And then Angela's like, yes, Tony, and it's in the most recent color of all the school buses. I know, which is bright yellow. Yes, and what, terrible. Right. But Tony says, an independent study of safe colors, this one comes out on top. That must be why school buses are bright yellow. Yes, yeah, so you can see the color. Maybe that's... But... Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Keep going. No, are you looking something up about the car? Well, yeah, I think I might have figured out what it is. But oh, um, but well, but on another side note, is what's awesome. I mean, you're still doing the description of the car, so you okay. keep going, and then what I have to say should. So he just says that. that he's added additional brake lights so that everyone will know when she is stopping or parking, and Mona says or docking. <laughs> docking. <laughs> Then he opens up the trunk and he says, get a load of the size of this trunk. And then he yells into it and pretends he can hear an echo. He says, you could put Bonnie and her car in this trunk. Is this a two? It's a four door though. It is a four door. Yeah. Hmm. So then he tells her to get in the car and get a feeling. He's like, get a feeling for your new car. He opens the door and he sits her in and she looks like she's seven years old. I sitting know, in this tiny. Car. <laughs> her head barely comes up the side of the door and she says, Oh, what a feeling. <laughs> the poor kid is miserable. So he's like, Why okay, she's all right. so low? <laughs> he's like, all right, okay, no problem. I'll crank up the seat a little bit for you. So when I first started driving, I had to drive with a pillow. Oh, is that right? Yes. And I, I, I probably should still drive with a pillow because I can't imagine I've grown much since then. We just we had the whole discussion of when you stop growing. All right, so... He's like, that's not a problem. I'll crank up the seat. And then he says, I have one more surprise for you. So Angela takes something out of the back of the car. And I love little subtle things with actors like this. Like Judith Light knew as soon as he got to that line, she needed to reach into the back seat and get the prop out, which was the license plate. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then she hands it to Tony. She's kind of holding it so you can't see what it says. She hands it to Tony. He flips it around. And it says Sam's car. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All caps. And you know what's funny about this episode is I've seen this episode named Sam's car, yes. like the regular way, and I've also right. seen it named with like this with all the capital right. the license letters. Plate. And mm -hmm. I didn't know that the that this episode, he gives her a license plate because I just don't remember the episode. Right. So I thought the title was a play on NASCAR. <laughs> I don't know why because NASCAR is all... <laughs> Capital. No, yeah, but that's funny. But it doesn't make sense because yeah. they didn't look like it's not like they're speeding, right? Anything. It's not a like race so, car uh, or anything. License but license plate makes way more sense. But yeah, I could see why you would have thought that if you didn't know that he right. gave her this license anyway. plate. Anyway, so he says, "Wherever you go, whatever you do, everyone will know this is your oh, car." Oh, she's so excited. <laughs> so, what was your first car? My uh, my first car was a 1981 honda accord hatchback oh that's pretty nice it actually was i mean it was you know it was an older car even then you know then mm -hmm. 
but it by the time I got it, but it was still um, it was a decent little car. I liked it. Yeah. When did I? <laughs> so, the cat would like tell us when uh, what his first car was. <laughs> I I um. But the other thing I was gonna say about this scene is how much time and energy Tony put into this car, putting reflectors on right. it and yes. the tire on the back. Mm-hmm. Like it's so Tony. He spent all that time like And when did he do all of this? The well, that's yeah, that's the other thing. He is Tony, but that's the other thing. My first car was also a nineteen eighty one. Oh really? Yes. But it was a Pontiac T one thousand. Oh boy. (laughs) Which basically looked like a Chevette. And I have a couple so this whole episode is very embarrassing stories about Sam's car. And I have an embarrassing story about mine that I'm gonna tell real quick. Okay. First of all, this car was like a car that this the owner used just to get from the golf course and back, so he never drove it very much. So even though it was so old by the time I got it, he only it only had like 10,000 miles on oh, it wow. or something ridiculous. Yeah. But the fuel injection didn't work very well. So in the morning, when I would go to school, the, when the car was still cold and I'd press on the gas, the car would almost come to a complete stop. Oh, gosh. Because it was like clogged or something. Yeah. So I had to pump the gas. But like when I left my apartment complex to go to high school, I had to cross like a four lane highway going left with a car that sometimes would come to a complete stop when oh, you press the gas. That's <laughs> terrifying. But that's not the embarrassing story. Then another time, I went to go turn on my um, blinker, and the whole thing just came out of the steering wheel. One time, I went to go put down the sun visor, and the whole thing fell off in my hand. Well, that sounds about right. Then one time, this is the best one, I'm driving into high school, and we had like this, It was a, I was a senior, so we were able to park in the senior parking lot, and I'm driving through this like back par- uh, road to get there, and all of a sudden, I hear a horn blaring. And there's construction workers working on a building on the way into the high school. And I'm like, who the hell is honking at the construction workers? And then I realized I was. Oh, no. Your horn got stuck. My horn, like, short-circuited or something and was just going off without me <laughs> pressing it at all. <laughs> so I start banging on the steer my, with my best friend. And she's completely mortified. I'm mortified. And I'm banging on the front of the steering wheel to, like, get it to stop. And it does. So I get into my parking spot and I had a friend that I knew who like did a lot of work on cars just go underneath my hood and disconnect my horn and I never had a horn after that because I was not going to risk it. (laughs) Not to mention that I went to a high school with a lot of rich kids so I parked my little piece of shit car between a Corvette and a BMW. Wow, fancy. Yeah. So anyway, not important to this. If anybody knows what kind of car this is in this episode. Let us know. I'm but you thinking think you it's found more it? maybe a, a Buick. It's some kind of, which is what I kind of thought from the beginning. It's either some kind of Buick or a, or a Plymouth. So uh, yeah, it does kind of look like that picture that you have up the Buick the Skylark. Bit, yeah, yeah, the Skylark. Yeah, but I don't know. Interesting. Honestly, if this car wasn't yellow and riddled with reflectors, it wouldn't actually be that bad. I mean, it is a big car, but. It's really the crap that he's done to it that makes it so hideous. Well, that's Tony. Yes. Okay. So she's now holding up her little license plate as if she's holding up the numbers when you get a mug shot. I know. That's funny. <laughs> she looks mortified. And uh, so th- she doesn't really know what to do. And she's just like smiling. And t- Tony's like, I'm such a happy guy. Yeah. Now we cut to Proud of himself. <laughs> Sam coming out of school. I think some of this is cut too in the antenna TV version. So I don't know where they shot this, and I wish we could figure it out. But it doesn't <laughs> look like a high school. It looks more like a college or something. It kind of looks like USC or something or really? UCLA. Yeah, yeah it's, it very well could be. It's a nice. Uh, it's a big uh, campus, whatever it is. So they show an outside shot of it, and then they show Bonnie and Samantha leaving, coming down the steps. And Bonnie says, come on, let's get out of here before anyone sees us in the USS Humongous. (laughs) And Sam says, Bonnie, I'm not embarrassed by my car. I'm secure enough to not be defined by what I drive. A car is simply a vehicle to get you from point A to point B. She sounds a lot like me. (laughs) And as she's walking towards the car, she looks at it and she says, and with my car, you could get there without even moving. (laughs) So they go out to the car, which is parked right in front of the school, and they get in, 
and these two boys come running out after them. These guys are just credited as boy one and boy two. Wow. And they had speaking lines and everything. Or they had lines. Yeah, know. I mean, they de- they are credited, but they just didn't have like a name. So one... Oh, I see, I see. The dark-haired guy is Rodney Eastman, who was born in 1967. So he's oh quite gosh. a bit older than... Uh, Alyssa Milano here because she's right. 72 so he's like five years old so he's about 21 here but he looks pretty young mm-hmm. um, and then the other guy is Lance hang on let me make sure I have this right yes the other guy up. is Lance Wilson White mm. both of them had quite a few acting credits in the 80s but neither of them are working now that I could see um, looks interesting like Right. And, and I wonder if, like, any of the kids standing in the re- background are, like, somebody yeah, I mean, that moved possibly. on today. That, you know what I mean? You yeah. make you wonder. We would have no idea, but yeah. Actually, the one guy over his shoulder there looks a little familiar. Yeah, I, I, I agree. So uh, one of the boys says, hey, Sam, nice car. He's like, yeah, it reminds me of something. Wait. Oh, I got it. The banana boat. Yeah, oh, that's not a nice. A banana boat. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, oh, you know, hang on. The other one says, like, a banana boat's not that big. Hmm. So she's like, okay, very funny, very funny. Do you have any more jokes? And he's like, yeah, I've got one. What's yellow has five tires and its own zip code? And then he says, Sam's car. Uh. And Bonnie's looking at Sam like she's just completely miserable. (laughs) So now Sam gets out of the car and she's like, all right, all right. Tell, she's like, let me tell you something. This car is two tons of the finest steel Detroit has ever made. Mm-hmm. So now she's giving them the spiel that the, Tony gave her. Right. It's complemented with heavy-duty yet functional rear impact resistors. <laughs> she really was listening because she memorized <laughs> it all. And it has two very important features. Safe and T. And she puts her <laughs> thumbs together. Just like That's Tony right, did. people. Safety. And in this, in its day, this car was some car. Okay, now I know we need this scene because it's funny and it calls back to Tony's thing. But would it, would she have ever actually done this? No. No. She Absolutely not. She would have hightailed it out of there. Right, embarrassed and <laughs> right. instead she, of trying to sell it. So she just made this way worse for herself. I mean, kids are dicks and they leave her alone. But it's just funny, like... I don't, and I wonder, you know, Alyssa Milano's life was much different than Samantha, but I'm sure even Alyssa Milano was thinking, like, there's no way she would really do that. But you have to have it for the comedic element of this show. So she gets back into the car, and Bonnie's like, oh man, major hunk approaching. Major hunk. (laughs) So they said it's Brad Ellis, and they're like, oh no, I'm dying. And then Sam says, I'm dead. I feel like kids still say that these days. Yeah. I think you're right. Now, this Brad Ellis, who's coming up to the car. Has yeah. a, he has a sweet uh, mullet. He does have a very sweet mullet. He, his name is Donnie Jeffcoat. And it looks like he hasn't acted since 2016, but he hmm. has a lot of credits. He had like 48 credits, started in... What's his name again? Johnny, um, I'm sorry, Donnie Jeffcoat. Hmm. Jeff Coat, it's a heck of a last name. Yeah, it's an interesting last name. He's in one of my favorites, which is Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. Oh, okay. He was on a few episodes of General Hospital, which I probably saw him in these episodes because I watched this in 1990, watched um, General Hospital then. But yeah, it looks like he hasn't acted since 2016. Okay, so he says, you know... Sam, like, don't let those guys bother you. You know, just forget whatever they're saying. Like, do you need help getting out of this parking spot? So Sam's like, okay, yeah, that would be really nice. Thank you. So she thinks he's going to do something nice for her. But then he backs up and he starts making air traffic controllers (laughs) signals. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, control tower to Sam's car. You're clear for takeoff on runways four, five, and six. And so he's like, she just is, whatever. Right, and she just... starts, <laughs> and she's not graceful getting out of this parking spot at all. But she just kind of gets out and peels off. Man, that car is large. It really is so big. <laughs> 
as they drive off, you're just seeing the car, but you hear Bonnie say, it's like you said, Sam, you're not defined by the car you drive. And Sam says, oh, shut up, Bonnie. I know, right? I know. <laughs> but on the Antenna TV version, you have that part, but you don't have the part where Sam actually says you're not defined by the car you drive. So it has a little more context when you see the complete episode. Okay. Of course. So now, later in the day, she's sitting on the couch doing some homework when Angela comes in. Angela comes in, hangs up her purse, and she says, Hi, Sam. You know, funny thing happened today while I was driving down 3rd Street. I saw a car park that looked just like yours. And Sam's like, oh, really? I'm sure there's hundreds of those. (laughs) And she says, with a license plate that says Sam's car. So then Angela asks her, why aren't you parking in front of school? Angela, you got to know damn well why she's not parking in front of school. Right, like, how do you not know? <laughs> so Sam's like, okay, listen, I park it there because I don't want anyone to see me because all the kids make fun of me. My social life is in the dumps. Oh, also, wait a minute. Where is Jesse? Not in this episode. Yeah, no. Um, and she's like, and I can't tell dad because it's going to break his heart. And Angela says, when the kids make fun of you, does your face turn red and your palms get sweaty and you want to dig a hole and crawl in it? <laughs> Why? Just the line coming up. Just go keep going. Oh, oh. and uh, Sam's like, yes. And she's like, you know how that feels? And Angela's like, I've been there many, many times. And Sam's like, they called the car a banana boat. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. yeah, she says, I bet they never called your car a banana boat. And Angela says, no, they called me a banana boat. <laughs> they called me a banana boat. Oh. Poor Angela. And Sam's like, that's terrible, Angela. I'm so sorry. They called me the banana boat. What did you boat. do? And Angela says, I stopped wearing the yellow Toreador <laughs> pants. Huh. Hang on, I got to pause for a second because I meant to look up what Toreador yeah, pants I mean, are. Yeah, I, I remember when we looked that up too. Okay, we're back. So they're just kind of like capri pants that you yeah. would wear today. Yeah. So I think it's more that they were yellow and not so much the actual cut and of the pants. More, I think, that that Angela was large. Then. Well, yes. That, I mean, that's the they, joke, they, that they, Angela they, was know, big, and they were yellow, so they called her a banana boat. I know. I, I like that. It's like, Samantha's like, wow, that, that's terrible, Angela, but yeah. like, back to what... <laughs> right. Uh, back to my problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's really awful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Aunt Samantha says to her, well, that's a start. And then Angela says, the point is, you just have to get through these things. Like, you know, you're going to get over it, and it's not going to scar you for the rest of the, your life. Even though Angela's still thinking about the yellow Toreador pants. I know, and the banana boat comments. But Sam says, you know, I just feel like I can't face those kids tomorrow. So Angela says, well, then you need to tell your father, like, how you feel. But Sam doesn't want to do that because she knows it's going to hurt his feelings. He comes in the door right now, very excited, holding a new accessory for Sam's car, yep. which are speakers. Yep. <laughs> Five-inch woofers. Mm. So she can blast her tunes. Right. <laughs> so she can draw more attention, attention to herself. Attention to the banana boat. And he's probably going to like mount them to the hood of the car so that everybody else hears the music and not like inside <laughs> the car or something normal. <laughs> and Sam's like, you know, Dad, I just really don't deserve any of this. We should, we should sell the car and we should use the money for something else. So he just thinks that she's like being so sweet. You know, she's like, even the insurance is too much. Like, we just, we shouldn't have this expense. He, and he's like, oh, you know, just because of that, I'm going to go get you the even bigger speakers because oh, you're so nice. selfless. <laughs> so we cut to another school day where Sam and Bonnie are walking to her car. And Bonnie's like, how much longer do we have to keep parking your car in Siberia? My feet hurt. And Sam says, well, we could be driving your car if you hadn't smashed it up. Okay, now they explain where her car is. Yes. So Bonnie has already smashed her car up and cannot drive it. And Sam says, you know, drive through doesn't actually mean drive through. (laughs) Now, as they're having this conversation, they walk past an open parking spot on this street. It's all parallel parking. And there's a large empty space in front of a fence. And they're like, wait a minute, where's the car? And then Sam's like, I could have sworn we parked it here. And Bonnie's like, maybe we missed it. How could you miss? How could you miss the banana boat? (laughs) And then Bonnie's like, well, maybe this isn't 3rd Street. And she's like, I know this is 3rd Street. So they run back to the open spot, and Sam's like, I parked right in front of the gate of this fence. 
and the car's not there. Uh-oh. So she's like, oh, it's gone. And then Bonnie says, it's like it disappeared into the Bermuda rectangle. Okay, so so Bonnie knows where, about where Siberia <laughs> is, but she doesn't know about the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> Unless Bonnie is so smart that she does know the Bermuda Triangle, but she's making a joke that the car is rectangle shaped. Oh, Bermuda rectangle. But okay. I don't think so. I think she's just yeah, supposed think, to be dumb. But yeah. it is kind of funny. I'm dumb and knowing <laughs> where some Siberia is. I like. Or maybe uh, she just threw it out there. Bonnie's little sweater. It's very cute. It has like oh. butterflies on it. It's very eighties. Okay. So Sam's like, it's been stolen. This is terrible. This is awful. This is too good to be true. Oh, yeah. So they're so very excited. excited. <laughs> yeah. So they cut to at home where Tony is on the phone with the insurance company and Sam's standing there hoping that this car is not going to ever be found. And Tony says into the phone, wait a minute, let me get this straight. My deductible is $250 and you say the car is only worth $200. So if we don't find it, I owe you 50 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, yeah, you just try to collect and he hangs up the phone. And then he says to Angela, that's the last time I buy insurance from the home shopping show. Well, yeah. Who does that? <laughs> no. I don't even think they sell insurance. Yeah. But let's leave the home. It, well, and it, it was the home shopping network, right? Which I think is actually still around. So let's leave them alone. Okay. Now, Sam's like, you know, they're probably never going to find the car. And even if they drew, it's going to be trash beyond repair. And I really loved that car. Mm. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> yes. And Angela's looking at her like, come on. And so Tony's like, all right, you know, I'm going to go try to figure this out. And Angela grabs her arm and she's like, are you laying it on a little thick? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> now, right then, the doorbell rings and Tony answers the door. And the crowd yeah, really applause. cheers for this guy. Okay. I wonder what he, do you know what he did right before this? That Let maybe me see gotten- here. His name is Garrett Morris, and he started acting in 1960. His, that's his first IMDb credit, wow. anyway. Okay, so let's see. 88, Who's the Boss? So once he had been on Who's the Boss, he had already been on... Well, he'd been on... Oh, The Jeffersons. Oh, yeah, Saturday maybe. Night Live. Oh, yeah, Ninety-seven right. episodes of Saturday Night Live. Right. That's how we. That's we did look that up. Yes. Duh, totally. Right. Right. Different strokes. Uh, he's okay. in an episode of The Love Boat. We've been watching The Love Boat lately. We should try to find this one. The yeah, Will. Deja Vu. The Prediction. Nineteen eighty-six. He plays Gary Samuels. Two two seven. He's in a lot then, of Two Broke Girls too. Yes. He's in almost every single episode of Two Broke Girls. And the Jamie Foxx show from 1996 to 2001, he was in 100 episodes of that. Wow. So yeah, the Saturday Night Live connection is definitely probably why everyone is screaming when they see him in the audience. And uh, so he plays Officer, what's his name here? Officer Audette. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so Tony opens up the door, and he's like, I'm looking for a Tony Maselli. And he's like, okay, that's me. And he's like, yeah, I I had a report of a stolen car. Oh, wait a minute. Are they going to say what the car is right here? 68 (laughs) Olds. Dang it. Are we that dumb? God. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I totally forgot. Yeah, as soon as you start saying that, I remember. 1968 Oldsmobile. 442. Oh, so it's a 68. Yeah. Wow. And he's like, okay, so we have a rep- we had reported this car stolen, a 1968 Oldsmobile with a license plate that re- reads Sam's car. And then he's like, did you find it? And he's like, yes. And he, Tony's all excited. He's going over to Sam like, can you believe it? They found it. We can smile again. That's funny. That's totally the car. I just looked at okay, it. Okay, yes. Exactly. The car. Yes. So, no. see, if it's not, I mean, okay, I get it. It's a big car. But if it's not yellow with all the reflectors, it's still kind of cool. Like, yeah, I would like to have that I car mean, now. It's it would have like been kind of a cool car. car then, not too bad. I mean, yeah. it is a 20-year-old car then, but right. still. But Sam, I think the point of it is it's so huge. Right. It's just enormous. Yeah. And so Sam and yellow. 
And yell. Is not at all happy that they found this car. But Tony is all smiles. And then the police officer's like, well, hang on. I do have some bad news. <laughs> and Tony's like, oh, no, what? And he's like, it, it was vandalized a bit. So Sam's excited about this. And Tony's <laughs> upset. And the, guys, and the officer says, yeah. I mean, whoever took this car, they put a bunch of ugly red reflectors on it. They stuck an old tire on the back. <laughs> they added some more um, brake lights. He's like, they really messed it up. I know, it's so funny. And then Tony's like, yeah, hey, yeah, okay. Yeah. It's like, some people are just sick. I know. So then the, the officer says, you know, um, okay, well. Oh. oh. Hang on. So as he's getting ready to leave, he says, you know, just so you know, you might not want to park the car on 3rd Street because a lot of cars get stolen from there. All Tony's, right, so. How did he know that it was on 3rd Street? Because I guess when Sam filled out the initial police report, she was on 3rd Street. Okay. So they knew that where the car had been taken from. All right. I'll accept that. I don't know why she would <laughs> fill that out and say that. Yeah, or maybe... Yeah, I don't know. But I guess they just needed to... She needed to be accurate for the right. police, but she probably just left that part out when she was talking to Tony. Right. And Tony's like, no, no, not across, not 3rd Street. It should have been in the school parking lot. And he's like, no, I'm not according to the police report. He's like, it was all... The and then Tony's like, wait a minute. Third Street is like five blocks from the school. And then it dawns and then on Tony him. Tony puts it together. Right. He looks at Samantha. Samantha kind of looks away and starts to leave. So he's like, okay, thanks, officer. Have a nice day. So he opens up the front door. The officer says, wait a minute. Uh, by the way, who owns the Jag that's out by the curb? And Angel's like, oh, that, that's me. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm parked too close to the curb, aren't I? Okay, I'll, I'll go fix it. And he's trying to get a word in, and she won't let him. She's like, I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm moving it. I'm moving it. Mm -hmm. She runs out the front door. <laughs> and Tony looks at him and says, well, what was wrong? And he's like, nothing. It's just a nice car. <laughs> I know. So ridiculous. And, and not to mention that Angel's still parking in the street, her Jaguar. I know. So that's She has a full house with a place to park out back. <laughs> Well, that's what I want to bring up now. So now not only does Angela have that piece of crap van in her driveway or garage, she now has this enormous banana boat that's parked in the garage or driveway. And she's still parking and the Jaguar in the street. <laughs> and I guess Angela doesn't have the station wagon anymore because I feel like if she did, she would have offered that to Samantha to drive sometimes. That must that's have, true. That must have gotten sold. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so after the and so then as he's leaving, the cop says she's a jumpy chick, and everybody really starts laughing. So I don't know if that's just because it's funny or if that was some kind of catchphrase of his from mm. like Saturday Night Live. Jumpy maybe. chick, man. Yeah, and then he leaves. Oh, I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah, I don't. I can't tell if it's just people thought it was funny or if it was something he said. Okay, so. When he leaves, he's like, tell me what's going on, Sam. You hate the car. And she's like, I don't hate the car. And he's like, okay. And she's like, I hate the car. And, he, and then Tony's like, how could you say that? <laughs> and she's like, look, it's just everybody. She's like, it's so big and it's so yellow and it's so big. And she said, all the kids made fun of me. And it was really embarrassing. She's like, I didn't mean to hurt you. And Sam, uh, Tony's like, well, I didn't mean to hurt you by getting you this car. I mean, we didn't. We don't want to hurt each other. So if you don't want to keep this car, then you don't have to. So she gets really excited and she's like, "Oh, great! Okay." Yeah, let's go pick out a new one. Right. She's like, "What are we talking about? You know, like a a five speed, a little two door." And he's like, "No, we're talking about nothing. A brand new 1989, nothing, any <laughs> color you want." And she's like, "I don't understand." And he's like, "This is the car we can afford. It's a safe car." And it's yours. So, you know, if you want it, then you can have it. And if you don't, then you don't have to. And he sits down. And she's like, you know, but the kids just made fun of me. And he's saying, you know, there's always going to be kids at school that are going to make fun of you for something. You know, they're not going to like your shoes or they're not going to like your hair. I wonder how much this is still a problem these days. I mean, I feel like the 80s were way more label focused and like that kind of stuff. Plus, Sam is a a kid who doesn't have a lot of money going to a school with kids who do have a lot of money. Hmm. But I feel like nowadays, I mean, I don't know. I guess we'd have to ask our kids. But it doesn't seem like people are so much on other kids for, like, labels and stuff. No. Because they I, all buy cheap clothes. I don't think so. I mean, I think that there's a, I think that there is a, like, um, certain kind of look 
Yeah. Like, maybe some labels, but it's not anything that's like yeah. super expensive. I don't like, know. I, I it's know weird. Some like of the, the girls kids haven't want... asked for anything particular that's a name brand. Really just those Air Force ones. Yeah, the Air Force ones. Yeah. The sneakers. That's right. But even those we accidentally well, she accidentally bought just the court shoes. Well, I did. I took her to the mall. I know, but she didn't understand that those were an Air Force. Well, I mean, they're I Nikes, didn't either. Right? I was like, oh, these are 20 bucks cheaper than all the other stores. <laughs> right. We're getting them here. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're not the Air Force One. Right. But so then I realized that and I told her, like, because I just didn't want kids to make fun of her and be like, those aren't really Air Force Ones. So I told her, I'm like, those aren't, I realize now that these aren't, do you want the real ones? And I'll take these shoes because our shoes are the same size. Our feet are the same size. And she was like, no, I don't care. I like them. So she was completely fine with them not being Air Force Ones. So I don't know if it's so much labels these days or just like a look. To my credit, they look like the Air Force Ones. They really do. Yes. I was fooled. I I did research on them because they, they said basically they look the same. They're just like you know, a slightly scaled back version of well, them. She loves them, so yeah. I don't care. And which is great. I mean, some kids back in the day, like I remember um, getting uh, parachute pants were big. Mm-hmm. And there was a particular brand right. of parachute pants. And then there were the generic ones. Right. And I remember I got the generic ones. I didn't get, so I tried to like not have it where people could see my, my label. Aww. I ended up ripping the crotch out of them. I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> But that happened at school, and it was in sixth grade, and I the crotch ripped out of them. Oh, and were you? Did I think they were notice? a little tight. I don't know. Are I, a parachute pants big? No, they were like tighter. Par, parachute oh. pants were a little tighter. Mine really? were tighter. Yeah. <laughs> I it was a pretty traumatic experience. Oh, I ripped the uh, ripped I'm the, sorry. the crotch, ripped the ass right out of those things. <laughs> And could you could you see it? I don't remember. I, okay. I, I know I got through the day, but there okay. was a problem. Right. I don't think I could sit normally. Oh, man. Being a kid again, I would never want to do it. I know. And like, I just always worry about that stuff with our kids. But like that's what my mom gets for buying fake parachute pants. <laughs> I don't remember what the actual brand was. Like that you, you I, don't, was I must cool. have been a little behind But they that, were expensive. Whatever remember. it was, was expensive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Didn't be too expensive for me. Right. Okay, so... Sorry, I just... Uh, no, no, I derailed us earlier with my horn, horn story. My, my Yeah, my terrible childhood. When we, when we post this episode on Instagram, pants. please, everyone share their embarrassing school <laughs> and embarrassing car stories. Okay. Yeah, I got a few more. No, I mean, I'm not going to tell them, but I have a few more. <laughs> so Tony's like, okay, you know, if you're going to spend the rest of your life trying to please your friends... You're never going to be happy. So you can take this car or not. Yeah, he is absolutely right. And she's like, all right, you know, peer pressure, transportation, humiliation, the open road, embarrassment, taking 30 of my friends wherever they want to go. 30. (laughs) So then she says, can we just, can we take off the extra brake lights? And he's like, all of them? And she's Hmm. like, yes. And he's like, Okay. I would have asked for more than that. Yeah, me too. Can it not be yellow? Can we take, Can we take off the all the reflectors? Tire in the back? And the t- yes, or leave the tire if it's not yellow and you get all the reflectors off. I feel like that's the worst part. Yeah. I forgot to mention this earlier. When they were at the school and the two boys come out, one of them bangs on the car and that little thing that we were talking about earlier that sticks out to measure the curb falls, falls off, off the car. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember seeing <laughs> yeah. that. So if you see that scene, go back and look at that. So he agrees to take off the extra brake lights. He's like, all right, you know, it's a deal. So then Sam's like, okay, well, listen, after we go pick up my car, why don't I take you over to Burger Palace? And Tony's like, are you kidding? I wouldn't be caught dead in that tank. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he just starts laughing. Yeah, he's oh, so funny. Oh, my gosh, we're already at the end of the episode? Yeah, I That went so. fast. Yeah. Okay, so now in the tag... Tony and Samantha are looking under the hood. There must be something wrong with the spark plug. So he says you have to take them all out one by one. He says one of your spark plugs may be fouled. (laughs) Once again, college Tony (laughs) talking. Yep, here we go. Fouled. Who says that? Nobody says that. I don't know. No. This must be fouled. He's like, you have to take all the spark plug wires, remove all the spark plugs, examine them, then figure out which one is the offending plug. Then wow. you clean them. Offending plug. 
and reinstall them. You put them all back in. And Angela comes up behind them as she's listening, and she says, or, and she takes a pencil out of her hair, because that's where Angela keeps her pencils. She says, you could just stick a pencil in the carburetor. And she reaches over, and she's even kind of saying it like a car, like, like her impersonation of an auto mechanic. Right. And she sticks the pencil in there, and the car starts, stops making whatever noise it was making, and she's all proud of herself, and they just look at her. Yeah. And that's the end of the episode. Yeah. Look at Angela. Yeah. She knows things. Yeah, and she you might, knows Nobody things. liked her albino meatloaf, but no. she knows things about cars. No. Okay, so you go first with rating. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> I mean, uh, sure. Because I'm not sure of the boss. <laughs> okay. Um... Uh, rating, uh, you know what? I like this one. I mm-hmm. really did. Um, I, I had some genuine, genuine laughs, not just like you know, oh, that's funny. Right, right. Like some genuine laughing in this video, in this uh, episode. Um, I gave this a seven and a half. Nice. Yeah. All right. I really liked it. Um, I thought, uh, like I said, there were just some genuine laughing points. The story's good. Um, you know, it's kind of a realistic type of story like mm-hmm. something that all any of us could have gone through yes like it's a relatable um, relatable sure. that's yeah. really more the, the word i'm looking for um so yeah overall it was good jonathan had his little moment and then he was gone we never Aww. saw him again i know yeah after he ran off that was it <laughs> um but yeah it was good good episode yeah i agree i gave it a seven i remember liking it as a kid that scene when she sees the car really stuck with me throughout the years mm. and I enjoyed rewatching it. Our kids like that scene and like I said, my mom liked that scene when she rewatched it. So yeah, it's, funny. it's just kind of one of those sort of classic like there are always gonna be episodes that stick out to people of things they remember from watching these shows as a kid. You know, you have all those like episodes that you remember from family ties or growing pains or whatever. So this is definitely one that I just remembered from a kid being what, a kid. What's interesting is and maybe I need to watch a couple more episodes of this season. I feel like this was it for me. I don't think I watched anymore. Yeah, because you were older. But, but, yeah, I mean, 88, I would have been... 16, right? Because yeah. you're the same age as Alyssa Milano? Yeah, right, exactly. What do you think Alyssa Milano's first car was? But I must have. But I must have kept watching because I really had a thing for her. Right. And I mean, she was the same age as me, and I remember her getting older. You probably just, like, if you were she, home, I just feel like just she felt them. older then. Not older, but she was my age. Right. Then. I don't know. I don't or maybe know you just to. watched them in like syndication and stuff. Yeah, pro- probably, probably. Yeah. I'm just trying to, I don't know if I really remember this particular episode, but we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, I feel like you're not going to know a lot of these from season five. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and it's only going to get worse. Like, I don't remember anything later, like way late, nothing. Yeah, I, don't, I know I, I was, I know I had stopped watching by then. I dropped off a bit in seasons seven and eight. Oh, I was um, definitely out. I was long gone. Yeah. <laughs> well, then. now you're going to get to enjoy it. It's all yeah. new to me. Who's the boss around here? Me or my mother? Or maybe it's you. I went with Sam as the boss for this episode. Okay. It really could be Tony. But the reason why I was thinking it's Sam is, you know, like she doesn't want to hurt his feelings. So she figures out a way to deal with the situation, which is I'm going to park further from school. Then, you know, the car gets stolen and she thinks she has this all figured out and then the car comes back. So she decides that she is going to just be upfront with him and like say, this car is super embarrassing and I'm sorry to hurt your feelings, but, you know, can we maybe do a few things to it so that it's not quite as embarrassing? (laughs) We never see this car again either. So I don't know. I don't think we do anyway. I'm going to have to keep an eye on that because now I'm not positive. You probably don't. But probably not. Because no. it's such a, it's a set piece that why would you ever right. bring it back again? <laughs> that car should have been in some sort of, in the Peterson Museum. I know, right? <laughs> the, the, who's the boss? Sam's car with the yeah. license plate and everything. Who do you think got to keep that license plate? I don't know. I'd love to know where it is now. Yeah. That'd be it's great. It's probably somewhere in the trash. Maybe she, maybe but, Alyssa Milano. Yeah, maybe it's one of the things Alyssa Milano kept. Okay. Um, so wait, yes. And then that's all. Those are all my reasons for it being Sam. Okay. I'll agree with you on that. All right. Because I was kind of torn between Tony and Samantha, but you make some good points. <laughs> so um, <laughs> nobody, but I, mean, I agree with you. Like just... She kind of came around and was like, all right, you know, either I have a car. Right. Or, you know, and, and my friends make fun of me and I deal with it or I don't have a car. So, yeah. um, 
I mean, I actually, when, when I was a kid, I got my first car. It was an older car. Mm-hmm. You know, it was at least 10 years old. No, I mean, I think it was more than that. It was probably like 13, 12 or 13 years old. But um, I still like like the car. Like, I'm like, my first car is cool. So, yeah, I mean, I mean it wasn't a banana boat, but. Um, right. But. Uh, I mean, my. I, I guess if it was a smaller car and it was the older, Samantha would have think it was cool. Yeah. I mean, and I made the comment earlier that I went to a school where a lot of kids had expensive cars. But right. also, a lot of kids didn't have expensive cars. So there was a good mix. So, like, I know a lot of my friends had kind of junky cars but we didn't care because it was a car like it was kind of expected that you weren't gonna you know your first car wasn't gonna be great unless right. you're rich so right. like i remember knowing my car was you know not fantastic but it really didn't bother i mean even the silly things up until the horn <laughs> yeah and after that's i figured fantastic. that out it was fine that's great <laughs> but you know even with all the shit falling off of it i was like i don't care you know it gets me around and it's a car and you get to go places so it doesn't matter you're gonna take what you can get okay so the next episode we're gonna cover is called my fair tony i believe this is going to be tony's official first day of school oh really yes i think oh. so Um, so yeah, that's our next episode and you can reach us at who's the boss podcast on Instagram or go to who's the boss pod one on Twitter on Facebook. We have a page called who's the boss podcast page or go to anchor.fm slash WTB podcast. And there you can leave us a voice message. And I just want to say that we got a voice message from, um, Hillary and I am going to play it. I'm just trying to see if I can figure out the answer to her question or her assumption before we play it okay um that is all thank you everyone bye bye if you like this podcast please subscribe and give a big thumbs up and tell all your friends and maybe you can tell your grandma your mother and your sister or brother maybe have no siblings tell your dog and cats bye